AQA, A-level physics, electromagnetic induction. This is my second video on magnetic fields. This is about electromagnetic induction. And this bit of the syllabus is what I'm going to do in this video. So now, if you move a wire through a magnetic field, so looking at this diagram on the left, we are moving the wire. Don't get this confused with F is Bill. In F is Bill, there's a force acting on the wire because of the field. Here, we are moving the wire. We are doing work and we are moving the wire and we are cutting through the field. And what we get is we get an EMF. We get a voltage, okay? This is why it's electromagnetic induction. Electro, we're getting electricity. Magnetic, there's a magnetic field involved. Induction, we are inducing, we are making it happen. An EMF, a voltage, okay? If you had a circuit, <clears throat> then you would also get an induced current, but you don't need a circuit to get an induced EMF. So as you move the wire through the field, you get like that might be positive, that might be negative, you create a voltage. If you move the wire upwards, then you get a voltage in the opposite direction. Okay. So uh, the size of the voltage depends on uh, if we use a stronger magnet, you get a bigger voltage. Uh, and if you move the wire faster, you will get a bigger voltage. And then the direction of the voltage will depend on the direction of the motion. I should say the direction of the EMF, but it's the same thing. Now this bloke here, Michael Faraday, okay? Now uh, he did a lot of work on this, a lot of investigating on this, and he came up with Faraday's law. And when a conductor, such as a wire, moves through a magnetic field, then we get an EMF induced, an induced EMF. And the size of the EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage or the rate of flux cutting. So basically it's proportional to how much flux we cut every second. If you cut lots and lots of flux every second, then you get a big EMF. When I say cutting flux, imagine the flux lines are like pieces of string. Remember the magnetic flux lines? And then if my conductor moves downwards there through them, it's cutting them. It's cutting all these bits of string. So it's cutting flux. And then Faraday's law says the EMF is proportional to how much flux is cut every second. In SI units, we actually get the EMF is equal to d thi dt. Uh, and then if it's moving at a constant speed, then it's basically the amount of flux cut delta thi in a certain time, okay? And this will explain why if you move the wire faster, you get a bigger EMF because you cut more flux. If you use a stronger magnet, you'll get a bigger EMF because you are cutting more flux. Yeah, the EMF, the induced EMF, is proportional to the amount of flux cut every second, and that is Faraday's law. Have a go at this pen, paper, calculator, and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. So we can work out the area swept out every second, the area swept out will be this area here, which is, that's the length of the wire. That's the velocity, so meters per second. So this is the area swept out. So the flux cut, thigh equals BA, okay? And then divide by the time, which in this case is three, will give you the, in fact, the flux cut per second, I beg your pardon, the flux cut per second is the induced EMF. It's equal to it. Uh, remember flux linkage was n thigh, talked about in the last video. And so if you have a coil which is rotating in a magnetic field, then the amount of flux going through the coil is constantly changing. And so we're going to get an induced EMF. So d thigh dt, 
Uh, when this coil rotates, the flux linkage through it will change. And from Faraday's law, we're going to get an induced EMF. So this is basically a generator. You're going to need some kind of uh, slip rings or something to actually get the voltage out of the coil. Uh, but this is a generator. We're cutting flux. We're getting an EMF. And uh, if the coil rotates with a uniform angular, excuse me, angular velocity, then n thi, the flux linkage, will vary sinusoidally, won't it? Like it'll be like a maximum in that position. Uh, then when the coil is parallel to the field, it will be zero. Yes, and then it will turn all the way round, so the flux will come through it the other way, etc., etc. So n thi will vary sinusoidally. How will the induced EMF vary with time? Look at this equation. If n thi is a cosine, then the EMF will be, yeah, it'll be a, a sine wave. Okay, so looking at this n thi is n thi naught cos omega t all we're saying is that the flux linkage varies sinusoidally uh, if you differentiate that we get d n thi dt is minus n thi naught omega sine omega t and if you combine that with faraday's law uh, and don't forget this minus sign i haven't talked about this minus sign uh, we'll talk about that when we do lenz's law in a minute and thi equals ba we get the EMF is BAN omega sine omega t. The maximum EMF will be when sine omega t equals one. So the maximum EMF will be BAN omega. Do this question, pause the video, pen, paper, calculator, get it done. And the answer is three, two, one. There you go. Area of the coil, maximum flux linkage, angular velocity, uh, and I said maximum EAF, EMF, BAN omega. So where does this minus sign come from? Well, it comes from this thing called Lenz's law. Uh, when I start with Lenz's law, teaching Lenz's law, I do this demo. You get a magnet and you drop it in a plastic tube and the magnet goes whoosh and falls through the tube. And then you get the magnet and you drop it in a copper tube and it takes ages and ages to fall. Now, why does it take ages and ages to fall? Is there something trying to slow it down? And the answer is yes. Now, why? I mean, a little bit complicated, but we'll get there. Basically, as the magnet falls through the copper tube, now the copper is a conductor, so that it's cutting flux. As the magnet moves through it, it is cutting flux, so we're going to get an EMF induced in the copper. And because uh, currents can flow in circles, can't they, around the copper tube, what we're going to do is we're going to get induced currents as well. So we're going to get currents flowing in the copper tube. OK, and these currents are going to produce their own magnetic field and that magnetic field will oppose. It will try to slow down the magnet falling in. So there's two magnetic fields now which are opposing each other. Now, Lenz's law basically says and learn this word for word. The induced EMF will always oppose or tend to oppose the flux change producing it. The EMF will try to stop the magnet moving. It will be a bit like friction. Friction always tries to slow things down. Friction never tries to speed things up. It always tries to stop things moving. And my induced EMF is the same. On these diagrams, if I push this magnet into this coil and the bulb will flash and the coil will try to stop it coming in, it'll say, no, don't come in. If you pull the magnet out of the coil and the bulb flashes, then the coil says, oh, where are you going? Come back here. And it will try to stop you putting it out. Now, why? Because you have to do work. You have to do work cutting flux. 
you have to do work against the field. It is making you do work. Why do you have to do work? Well, if you think about it, where does the energy come from to light the bulb? And the energy to light the bulb must come from you doing work. So it's conservation of energy. Lenz's law is a form of conservation of energy. And because the EMF is opposing the flux change, that's why we have this minus sign in Faraday's law. This minus sign is because of Lenz's law. And it tells us that the EMF opposes the change in flux. When we push the magnet into the coil, the induced EMF opposes this motion. And it does it by producing a field which opposes the magnet coming in. When we pull the magnet out of the coil, the induced EMF opposes this motion by producing a field which attracts the magnet. In both cases, we have to do work. And we have to do work because that's where the energy comes from to light the bulb. If we didn't have a circuit, then it wouldn't be able to oppose us. You'd still get the EMF, but you wouldn't get a current. So it would be a lot easier to push the magnet in and out. Yeah. But it would tend to oppose. It would like to oppose you, but it can't. You should be familiar with this. This is an experiment we do. You have a, a coil and you drop a magnet through the coil and the coil is attached to an oscilloscope and we get this trace here. So this is voltage against time. This is the induced EMF against time. A magnet is dropped through a coil which is connected to a storage oscilloscope and we get this trace. Use the laws of electromagnetic induction to explain why we get a bigger EMF at A than we do at C and why the EMFs at A and C are in opposite directions the laws of electromagnetic induction. We know what they are. They are Faraday's law and they are Lenz's law. So Faraday's law, first of all, say what it is. Faraday's law says that the EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. Therefore, you're going to get a bigger EMF at C. Why? Because the magnet is moving faster because it's fallen due to, it's accelerated due to gravity. The magnet is moving faster. The, the rate of flux cutting will be bigger. You'll get a bigger EMF. Lenz's law, say what Lenz's law is. Lenz's law says the EMF will oppose the flux change causing it. And so when the magnet is coming into the coil, we'll get an EMF in one direction. And when the magnet is leaving the coil, we'll get an EMF in the opposite direction because of Lenz's law, because it will try to stop it coming in and then it will try to stop it leaving.